Perhaps Martin Scorsese's weirdest movie. It's 1985's After Hours. Let's talk about this movie and try to make a little bit of sense out of it. That might be impossible. Coming up next. <laughs> All right, I'm holding one page of notes from this movie where I took many pages of notes and you know what? Let's abandon that and just talk. Coming out of King of Comedy, Taxi Driver earlier, Raging Bull as well, Martin Scorsese had made a number of movies about Manhattan and here he makes one about an adventure, a labyrinth, a Kafkaesque fairy tale that's a comedy. 1985's After Hours, I just really enjoy watching this movie, even though I can't make sense out of all of it myself. The movie has a strange sense of humor. It may be nightmarish, bizarre, weird, funny, and disturbing all at the same time. The movie depicts a character named Paul Hackett, played by Griffin Dunn. He seems to be a computer programmer. Three minutes into the movie, we see him bored at home at night, so he decides to go out to a cafe, meets a woman, goes to try to hang out with her, and that's where his adventure begins. I say adventure, but this also may be a rat in a maze, as is well known. He seems to be a mouse caught in traps. He runs up against barriers, and he gets lost. He tries to go back home during this night out in New York City, in Soho, Manhattan, and he can't get back home because he loses his money, and then people are against him throughout the entire movie. He keeps meeting strangers. They're weird. They're different. They're not sure what to do with him. He's not sure what to do with them. And according to a number of commentators, I wouldn't know this, but this movie captures what it might be like or might have been like to be in early 1980s New York City, one of the weirdest places, supposedly urban environments ever. And if Scorsese did capture this, it definitely has a unique and strange feel. The movie is a weird mix of styles. It's both realistic and surrealistic at the same time. Wikipedia calls it film noir and screwball comedy, but I think of it as both a piece of wisdom literature, Job-like, where a character actually gets lost and cries out to God or some kind of higher power at one point. What do you want from me? What have I done? Just a word processor for Christ's sake! As well, this is a strange urban fairy tale a la Kafka, Franz Kafka, whose metamorphosis and the trial are just bizarre bureaucratic nightmares, but also weird warped fairy tales that may be what this movie is. This movie is unclassifiable. Now that doesn't make it great, but it makes it interesting. And you can slap 10 to 15 labels on this movie, none of them fit. And yet, when you put them all together, maybe they all fit together. And there are very few movies that can combine all these labels together, whether it be screwball comedy and film noir and horror tale and urban fairy tale. They're all here and more. Now, I think you should go watch this movie and see if you like it, if you haven't already, because we're going to give a few spoilers. This movie does make me laugh quite a bit. It also makes me cringe. I almost want to stop watching it 70 minutes in. So let's analyze it a little bit, and I can only give you just a tiny piece of what this movie is could be about. First of all, this computer programmer gets lost in an urban nightmarish landscape. And so you have this existential hero or main character. And with his day job at a boring job, the night is a wholly different environment in which he can get lost and become literally almost a new person. By the end of the movie, as we know, he gets in cased in a sculpture and then breaks out of that sculpture. One of the questions for the end is with this circular return, leaving work and coming back to work, basically the whole movie is one big circular journey, is this character reborn or resurrected or transformed? The sculpture being like a cocoon as it were near the end, once he breaks out of it and is dropped accidentally out by his work. Is he the same person or is he a different person? It's hard actually to tell given that the movie just kind of ends with an excited you know, Mozart score and the camera whizzing around the office. Is this man the same person or not? And he's going to have similar kinds of journeys that result in the re eternal return as it were or is he transformed or uh, resurrected? You might then talk about what the title After Hours means which I think is very rich, elusive, and interesting. After hours in common parlance, as you know, usually means after business hours, after the business is closed. And the movie does indeed have this day versus night, business versus don business theme to it. Sometimes the character goes into restaurants or tries to, the restaurants are closed, or after hours, things are weird or different in the cafes, the bars that he goes into. May I enter? 
I can't let you in at the moment. But after hours also means I think you could take it literally after hours, almost like a post time world or a world without time. Character is outside of the time bound world of the office, of his computer job, of the ones and zeros of the up and coming digital world circa 1985, and now is in this weird, amorphous, and unknown scenario, which he doesn't know what time it is, and it doesn't even matter after hours. In this post time world, money has no meaning, or there's no money, art is everywhere, and weirdness abounds. I think that's why I call this movie Kafka-esque, but I think a little bit of Alice in Wonderland, a weird sort of twisted logic, but logic nevertheless, logic without time involved in this movie. Think about what after hours then means, a world without the dominance of time, worrying about what time it is, what the minutes and seconds are, and without the regimented measuring of time. I think that's what this nighttime landscape that this character wanders through is being outside of time we don't know how much time passes how long time takes we don't have a sense for when things are happening and how long they take and that's exactly what this character experiences a bizarro world where for example when the toilet flushes it comes up instead of going down it comes up out of the toilet and it's all a sign that things are not as they should be and not operating as they would during a quote-unquote normal day when there is normal time and ways to measure the passing of time after hours and you could see this as this character beginning lost in a world of art even what is art like it's bizarre it's weird it's imaginative there's all kinds of strange coincidences going on he gets lost in a world of symbols at night meets the sculpture artist He's longing for a paperweight, which is a kind of sculpture. And there's all kinds of music in this. And of course, the book, he likes Henry Miller's Tropic of Cancer. You get mentions of Wizard of Oz and all kinds of other art objects. So in this movie, he goes from a world of ordinary programming on a computer, sort of boring day job, goes into the night and experiences all kinds of artwork. Maybe he himself learns he's an artwork. He at least gets encased in artwork and then emerges from it. This movie seems to criticize his desires. First of all, he might want money, but he can never get it after all. He seems to want sex from the first woman he sees, and we see that, you know, showing up on screen as a sort of desire he might have, but, you know, he gets weirded out by the fact she may be, or the possibility she may be a burn victim, and she herself is kind of weird. He wants to go home. Well, guess what? He gets to go home, but in a weird and warped way, and his home is not actually his actual home. It's his workplace. And maybe this character is guilty. All along, he's repeatedly washing his face at least three to four times, not just the rain coming down upon him, but going to the bathrooms and sometimes not even needing to, but washing his face off. Is that a sign of guilt? Is this a sign that this existential character is guilty and needs to be redeemed by the end? Perhaps you can read this a la Scorsese's Catholicism. However, this may be a criticism of the subject in the modern world who is a slave to not just desires, but symbols themselves. A movie is filled with symbols keys for example show up everywhere maybe hinting at there may be keys to the movie or teasing us that there's no key to the movie or they could be the keys to the kingdom the keys eventually have a skull on them and the skull imagery shows up at least two to three times all of this adds up to a character is one transformed by the symbols that he encounters and he's not aware of what they mean but they sort of transform him and they hint at his future is going to be shaped by them as he encounters, say, the death skull and the keys while he's going to encounter death, for example. As he encounters, you know, the $20 bill in the sculpture, well, that's in his past because he lost the $20 bill, but he needs it to get home, and he's going to encounter that sculpture later on and actually become it. The idea may be that the subject, the urban subject at this point in time, is shaped and formed and transformed by the, all the symbols and objects that are symbols in his or her life. So to me, this is one of the more underrated movies in Scorsese's filmography, even though it's gotten great reviews. I haven't seen it talked about a lot. It is related to his later New York City movie, Bringing Out the Dead from 1999 with Nicolas Cage. I think those two movies pair very well, and you should watch them perhaps together. Also, this movie is a weird answer to Taxi Driver as well. What do you think of After Hours? This is often one of the more requested videos for this channel. Now I've done one. 
and I've only given you some observations, but not a lot of interpretation. So how about in the comments, some of you begin to interpret it and link this movie to other things, to novels, to psychological theories, whatever you want. I'm sure this movie can generate all kinds of conversations about what it might be about. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you and have a great day.